happy Thursday. Um, I was trying to think about what I would talk about today, and I, I had all kinds of, uh, my brain started going all kinds of different ways. And I, at some point this morning, I thought, we just need to laugh. Um, today doesn't need to, I don't feel like we need to um, address any major issue, although if you haven't already heard, um, we have decided that we are going to wait um, to come back together for worship. We'll make a decision at the end of May, but for now we're going to continue with the online services. Um, it's just safest for our congregation, and um, that's, uh, that's my main concern, is that we can um, live to church another day. So um, that's a decision there. And, and so, but I, and you should have gotten an email. We posted it earlier on Facebook, so you should already have that. So I, I don't need to talk about that today. Um, but then I, I started thinking, it's just, I like to laugh. Charlie's joke of the day is one of my favorite things. Let's just start the day with humor, right? So I started thinking about what are some of those scriptures that make me laugh? Um, people who have been in my Bible study make fun of me because very often when we start reading scripture, I'm like, oh, I love this passage. It's one of my favorites. Um, so this one um, also falls into that category, but only because it is, to me, it's just, it just shows what a great sense of humor God has. So you might remember if, if you watch our worship services, um, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before that, we were talking about Elijah and when he had done the um he had done that big miracle where god rained down water and then or he filled the this whole thing with uh water god rained down fire and burned up the water and and the bull and all of that and then elijah went from there and he and he was very discouraged and so we talked about how he was isolated and discouraged um but i think we also talked about how elijah is one of the great prophets. He's one of the people that um, the the Jewish people had been looking for for him to return. And so he is this in, incredibly powerful man. And when he leaves from that mountain after hearing God in the whisper of the storm, um, he uh, God also tells him, you're going to head back and you're going to name um, the person who's going to follow you. You're going to anoint um the person who is going to take on your ministry. And so he goes back and, and Elijah gets Elisha. And um, so Elisha, Elijah, and he, he recognizes that this is a great and powerful man. And so in 2 Kings 2, uh, it is time. Elijah has taught Elisha everything that he's supposed to, and it's now time for him to go back up. And and um, so in the, in the scripture, it talks about they're riding together. They're they're walking together, and and Elisha tells Elisha, you know, it's it's about time for me to leave. And Elisha goes, I know, I, I don't want to hear it. Actually, um, he said I mean, he says that he goes he goes. Uh, Elijah says, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? And Elisha says, Yes, I know, but do not speak of it. Like. Like, he just shut it down, right? So that always makes me kind of, like, I don't want to hear it. Like, I picture this, la, 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 right? Um, and so, and Elijah's like, it's going to happen, dude. And uh, so they start going, and then all of a sudden, um, 50 men come out, and this great chariot comes and picks Elijah up and takes him up into the sky. And, and I just imagine this, like, incredibly powerful moment when you can't question that Elijah was God's chosen and that this was, you know, such an important man. Um, and so th that's Second King, first Second Kings chapter two, that all of this has happened. Um, so the chariot has picked him up and they keep walking, and um, and he has this conversation with these fifty prophets, and then. Um, then it, the, then it goes into 2 Kings 2. He says, um, The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this uh, look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water and the land is unproductive. So Elisha is going to go in, and he is going to heal this water, right? And he is going, and, uh, and he does. And so now Elisha has proven 
that he is going to carry on Elijah's work and that he has this power from God. And, and like, so in my mind, there's just all of this like pageantry and, and grandeur and miracles. And then this is the part that makes me laugh. Um, second Kings two, starting with 23, it says from there. So from this powerful, he has healed the land and the water. Elisha went up to Bethel as he was walking along the road. And can you imagine how he felt about like, I am able to be this, this great prophet, right? Then it says, as he was walking along the road, some youths came out of the town and jeered at him. Go on up, you bald head, they said. Go on up, you bald head. And, and so I just picture, like, here's this, like, this man that now feels as if he has absolute dignity. And, and teenagers are mocking him because he has no hair. Uh, and, like, just what a that would do to any kind of ego he was developing. And so this great man of God who, you know, is jeered at by teenagers instead of like, you know, I don't know, putting them in their place with words or ignoring them and his absolute dignity. This is what he does. He turned around, looked at them and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the youths. And he went on to Mount Carmel, and from there returned to Samaria. The end. Like, the, the things that you can find in the Bible, to me, are just awesome. Um, because that little snippet, like, why is that in there? Is it to teach teenagers not to mock their elders? Because if so, I need to have a sit down with, with my youth that I, that I used to work with and all of my children. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, that's the word of God for the people of God. There's a lesson to be learned in there. Don't mock people. Uh, maybe keep control of your emotions. Um, I don't know. Something. Um, but I just thought it was it was a nice to, to take a break. Oh, oh! Could you see the church behind me for a while? Um, I paused the YouTube. Uh, I tried to I tried to make it look all fancy schmancy. Um, I miss you guys. It's always good to talk to you, um, and I hope to, to be able to see you soon, maybe on a Zoom or something. Have a great day.